stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee. Nice. Okay, Mr. Red Pill Pickup Artist, so you have a rotation. Do you think you are the only one in the world who does? She does too. So you have five to nine women that you see and are with on a regular basis. She has the same with men. And you still think you're cool by going with a woman who has anywhere between five and nine men on a regular basis. Good for you. Good job. Speaking of red pill, have you had enough yet of the bitter black pill guys? Have you had enough? You want to come home to sanity, clarity, and reason? The door is always open. There's a welcome mat for you. I hate to say this, but everything you learned about history, everything, is truly alt history. Everything you learned about world history has been spun to create an image in your head of people and nations. I contend that everything that you learned is wrong. And that when you get, and I'll say it, red-pilled about world history, you're going to get angry. Because you're going to feel like you've been misled. When you start to see the truth about history, about how nations rise and fall, about how people dominate, infiltrate, control, you get angry. Some of you will be vocal about it. Some of you will just adapt your behavior appropriately, some inappropriately, unfortunately. But once you know the truth, you can't go back. And once your eyes are open, you start seeing things happening. You start digging a layer or two deeper behind everything, and you see that everything that you've been taught in history books is nothing but a nice little package that has a bow on it. It's wrapped up nicely, encapsulated. So you can say World War I started because and ended because and World War II started because and ended because and these are the bad guys and these are the good guys and we're part of the good guys. The reason why the nation split is because of XYZ, not ABC. And this is a good guy and this is a bad guy. Can you see where division started? Can you see who keeps the division up? Alt history. Hey G, what's it like dating at your age? My answer is this, the game is the same, except the women are now gray. Nothing has changed. There's a little bit more, what did John Hoover tell me, finesse. It's not as blatant with the opposite sex, or it could be. But it's the same. I don't care if you're 30 or you're 60. The game is the same. It's just that the people have gray hair and wrinkles. That is it. Things don't change with age. They don't change. Things don't get better on their own. Things don't get better just because you add 30 years. Many times they just get worse. This is why older people have no filter on their mouth. They tend to speak their mind. The people with no filter, listen to them. Don't dismiss them. 
tell me, what are some good reasons for divorce? Put your answers down below. What are good reasons, legitimate reasons for divorce? People get divorced for a lot of different reasons. I know there is a phrase in the legal world called irreconcilable differences, which means you just can't come to an agreement on things, which is kind of a catch-all phrase for this ain't going to work. But what are the real, legit reasons for divorce? I can only think of a couple, maybe two or three. I can think of one that is a absolute 100% legit reason to get divorced, and that's infidelity. If there's any cheating, it's over. There's no coming back. I don't care what anyone says. Yes, but you're a Christian and you can forgive. I can also be divorced and forgive too. I will not go. If I will not go back somewhere where another man has been after I was married. That ain't gonna happen. And it shouldn't happen to you. And if you go back to somebody who cheats or who has cheated on you, you're both wrong. The one who cheated throughout the marriage, the one who takes back the cheater, you have no respect for yourself. And don't Jesus your way out of this. She leaves a 20 plus year marriage with zero regret or guilt sees men on the side. What makes you think she's going to commit to you, buddy? She will have five to seven transition men, all who think that they might have a chance, some who think she's just a piece of ASS, but she doesn't mind at that point. Every woman plays the role of piece of ass. Willingly at some point in her life. If anyone's offended, you're being offended at the truth. And every man plays stud at one point in his life. Most, not all. I'll qualify that. So, she will Sex her way to the guy who won't ask her hard questions, won't dig too deep, and will, Im and will improve her life. That's it. Simple as that. If you meet a woman who is just out of a relationship, newly separated, divorced, you don't stand a chance with her. Most of the time. Not all of the time. But as a general rule, don't do it. She's going to make you think like you're the only one. But she still has to spread her wings and something else. It's trouble, mister. It's trouble. But you're different, right? The world stops turning because of you and your opinions and your intentions. And you're a good guy, right? You're one of the good guys. You know how much of my coaching is with good guys, nice guys? Have you ever read Mein Kampf? I took a poll. 80% said no. 20% said yes. Holy cow. Again, there's that 80-20 rule. If hating people is not your default state, you know how there's people that just don't like anyone, they hate everybody. If you're not one of those, and then there are people that you come to really strongly dislike or hate, or you can't stand them. Most likely it's not you that is the problem. The issue is that they're probably very unlikable or very hateable. So don't bear the burden of being a hater or a hateful person. There are some people in this world that just don't deserve your attention and are not very likable at the least and hateable at the worst. It's not you, it's them. So don't feel bad.
The very day someone says to you, you scare me or I'm afraid of you. And if that's untrue, and you know in your heart that you would never hurt anyone, my friend, now you know what it's like to be gaslit. Gaslighting is making a problem in someone else's life. When someone says, you scare me, they are making you feel like you are an aggressor. A person who is possibly unhinged, can go either way, unstable. Don't let people do that to you. That's called gaslighting. If you've ever been gaslit, that is indicative of one thing. They are deflecting attention away from themselves and putting it on you. It's a tactic that desperate people use when they have nothing substantial or they themselves are caught red-handed. It's their way of deflecting attention away from them and on you. Ignore them, get rid of them, put them behind you. Learn to say no and close the door on people that gaslight you. I don't even know where that term came from, but I understand the concept well. How is your relationship with social media? Is it a good marriage? Is it a dysfunctional relationship? Realize that social media is the abusive, unfaithful spouse that will always, always hurt you, always stab you in the back. So you need to change your relationship with social media. As I like to say, if social media was a spouse, I need to divorce it. If social media is a long-term partner or relationship, you need to say, can we be just friends? Social media is hurting you in the same way TV is hurting you or has hurt you. you you've, you've heard me say, turn the TV off. Stop the programming. It's easy to turn the TV off, but have another drug, another abusive partner called social media. Why do we have smartphones? The only thing smart about a smartphone is the phone itself. Not us. We're not smart because this is gathering information it's spying on us constantly. iPhones have three microphones in them. You probably didn't know that. They're listening to you at all times. It's now become a joke, a meme, where you mention something in conversation, and then when you open up your phone, you get nothing but advertisements about that thing that you mentioned two hours earlier. It's happened to you. The first time, it's a coincidence. Second time, hmm kind of a coincidence. Third time, you're like, holy crap, they're listening to me. Now we know that's a fact. You are being listened to. But who is the they? When I say they are listening to you, who is they? Who do you think they are? They. Put your answer down below. I'd love to know that. Two old guys are sitting on a park bench. There's a dog on the grass licking its balls. One guy says, I wish I could do that. The other guy replies, if you pet it, it might let you. Have you had enough yet? Yesterday, your president, our president, said, just wear the mask. Just wear it. Not a big discussion. Just wear it. Oh, by the way, that's St. Anthony behind me. Am I a big believer in the saints? I believe all Christians are saints. Yesterday I got a pair of scooter gloves. Scooting gloves. Very interesting. They have gel pads on the palms. And a very grippy palm. Very grippy. Reminds me of like workout gloves. But I could see where it would dampen the vibration. But it has two loops right here. 
You know your workout gloves, how they end up going inside out when you take them off? Same thing with these gloves, except they have two loops where you grab the loops. I thought this was interesting. Grab the loops and they come off and they don't go inside out. I wasn't sure what they were for, but when I went to take them off, I can see how, what a great little thing. And I don't feel the loops on my hands. I don't feel them when I have the gloves on, but it does dampen the vibration on a bike or a scooter. I like them. I will be using these. What else did I get? I got some military grade sealant. So in case there's a puncture, that gets sealed up right away. So I'm looking forward to installing that. And I got a little tool that takes out the valve stem. So I can put the sealant in, then put the valve back on and fill up with air. So that would be a good thing. I made ribs yesterday with traditional Caribbean jerk seasoning with scotch bonnet peppers. Cook them for about three hours on the top rack on the grill, and holy cow, were they good. Authentic jerk seasoning. I'll put the link below. And with that, finish your coffee, and I'll see you tomorrow on the Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason.